Hey there, fashionistas. Happy Friday and welcome to 5 to 15 minutes of fashion with yours truly, Nina Johnson. So today, um, you've seen, sorry, I was glancing at the baby monitor because I'm taping this while my kid's asleep and I'm hoping I'm not too loud because who wants to wake up a two-year-old? Not me. I definitely don't. She's good. She's down. We're good. Um, so today I am just jumping in with all the petty banter going around about Birkins being real or fake and I decided that I would do a little video on authenticating a Birkin but instead of giving you guys just a little appetizer I wanted like a quick history of Hermes well kind of like a quick history um there's some really good videos out there that go into detail so I figure like why regurgitate and do that all over again when I can give you links to those resources so you can go on and see the full video and get way more information than here but I'm just going to kind of do like top level tip of the iceberg kind of run through about Hermes and then I'll go through um, some of the ways to authenticate a Birkin if you are considering purchasing one with um, my Birkin here in this big orange box over here in the corner. So we're just going to jump right in and I feel like I say that a lot. Also, I do this a lot, but I feel like I'm sorry that if that annoys you, I just want to keep my hair back. You know, girls got to show her a clavicle. Also, I've done like a lot of like blazers with like my boobies out i don't even know who i am anymore i'm being like such a little hooker but again this is a girl show so guys who aren't here for the fashion please avert your eyes also leave us this is like my girl time so um hermes started in it was was it 1837 by terry hermes um the company is almost still 100 percent family owned like they had a failed uh, kind of going public attempt in 1990 it's but it's basically still owned by the Hermes family um, Hermes started off kind of like Gucci doing um, like saddles and bridles and a lot of you'll see a lot of that integrated specifically the stitching integrated into their bags um, the Hermes shop like they were just always about the drama um, and the glamour they um, serve people like Napoleon the third which is insane and lots of other European royalty well in 1922 they developed their first um, and I have a little cheat sheet to make sure I'm hitting all the bullets um, they made their first handbag and then in 1937 they opened their first kind of scarf manufacturing and I call them a twilly. I've heard them being called that but they're really pretty Hermes scarves that you see tied on Birkins and the Bolide and all those bags. So they opened up their first like silk scarf factory in 1937. Um, so I'm going to start with just like a review of their bags. So one of their first bags was again the Bolid. Um, I love this bag and they've done some fun things to kind of update this bag. But before I get to that, let's talk about there. There's a Bolid that's um, kind of your standard. I think it's like 30 centimeters and there's a Bolid that's wide. And the wide Bolid doesn't have the little... Um, the, the oval patch on it like the more narrow one but it's a super classic bag it was again Hermes first bag and Hermes is really kind of an understated brand which is why I think it's just like I mean I'm not old money I'm not old money I'm not new money I'm just like a label I mean I'm a logo ho unfortunately so but I think that's why this bag wasn't didn't become as mainstream as maybe like a Chanel bag because you could tell from a distance that a Chanel bag was a Chanel bag but Hermes does a lot of like no logos so I really think that's really pretty in a lot of their bags too so if you know you kind of just know with those bags um, and then the Bolide, they did like a rainbow one recently, and then like they've done some with like really cool graphic prints on them. Love the Bolide. And the next up, I think is one of the like super popular bags. It's their crossbody. It's the Evelyn. And the Evelyn's done in a bunch of different leathers, and so that's something too. There's a there's um, Yogi's Closet has a full history for Hermes and it talks about like all the different types of leather and the stitching and the different sizes and what the bags are called like so if you were super into it I will put that link on my website so you can go um, and just like drown in Hermes knowledge it's super interesting I was like reading it one night and my husband goes what are you so into I'm like I'm looking at porn I mean it felt like porn for me it makes me tingle in my no-no place that's what Hermes does um so back to the Evelyn so the Evelyn 
really fun colors really doable crossbody bag i think it's probably um most known for having the h on the front it's probably their heaviest logo bag but with a really simplistic like h just kind of done in um kind of perforated holes throughout the bag which i really think is pretty the h inside the oval gorgeous bag and i love that it comes in a bunch of different sizes um size options and colors I love the Evelyn. I don't own one of these bags, but it is going to be next in my collection. The next up is the Garden Party Bag. I recently talked about this bag. I called it the Garden Bag. Sorry, the Garden Party Bag. Um, Amazon has some really like dangerously close um, kind of designer inspired Hermes Garden Party Bags. And I've seen, I think the celebrity that carries the most amount of Garden Party Bags, I've seen Reese Withers. She likes them a lot. Reese Witherspoon carries them a lot. Um, and I love the just beautiful um, simplicity of the garden party bag. And Hermes has the most like luxurious leather. Love Hermes leather. But yeah, I love seeing Reese Witherspoon and she's like notorious for like sticking another bag down inside of her garden party bag. And I think garden party bags are good for like carrying on a plane too because they come in a different array of sizes. Um, different array. There's two. There's like a smaller one that I think that's like 30 centimeters and then there's a larger one that's 36 centimeters but it's a super pretty bag and there is one um, that's pretty close to it in color and in shape on um, Amazon and I already have that linked on my site but if you're looking for it and you can't find it just DM me and I'll send you the link. Okay. Oh, I have a fuzzy on my lip. I hate that. Everything sticks to this lip gloss. I mean it's pretty bomb lip gloss. Tom Ford. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cut all that out. Or not. I'm not going to cut it out. It takes too much work. So after the garden party bag, I think my, my next up would be the, the Constance. So the Constance was released back in 1959 for, I think it was like named after some royal's child. But again, you can go through and read all of that information at Yogi's Closet because they just have a full detailed history there of the Constance. Now the Constance is um, pretty recognizable too because of the H clasp on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You guys, I knew this was going to be one of those days where I couldn't stop clearing my throat, so I brought my water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, I'm back on. And I'm also checking. Kids still sleep. We're good. So I love this. It's the simplicity of a crossbody bag. Um, and then I will, I did not mention pricing for any of these bags, um, but you can find all of that at Yogi's Closet. It'll go through all the prop pricing. So I'm trying to get to like the grand finale here. So I'm trying to give you a little bit of detail, a little bit of fluff, a little bit of appetizers, orders before I get to the steak, the meat and potatoes of this presentation. So I didn't want to get too lost in the weeds because I do that too much. Like I, I looked at my Chanel video and I was like, why is it like 30 minutes on like just Chanel history? Like no one is that lame. Like no one gets off on it. Like I, well, maybe you do, but you and me and like, there's like five other people who get off on it, but everybody else is just like, let's Let's get to the how to authenticate it. So back to the Constance. I love that it has the H clasp. I think that's really, really pretty. And again, the Constance comes in um, different shapes, at different shapes, not different shapes, different sizes and different colors and different leathers. Super pretty, versatile bag. I love it a lot. I love the crossbody shoulder straps. You can wear it really easily. Super gorgeous bag. So next up is the Hermes 2002, and I think this one kind of winks to the Constance in that it has the um, the clasp, looks like an H, but it's a more modern version, and this seems more like it's a later model, but it feels more Hermes to me in that it's understated, and you would have to like look at it to know, um, and you would almost just have to like know to know, and so that's why these bags are so like old money, because you're not throwing in, I mean, this isn't like ostentatious like you if you again if you know you know you know that was very redundant but you know you get me i love all the different colors of the um hermes 2002 <clears throat> it's just a beautiful bag so next up my obsession but of course this bag is not the one in the news right now so i'm trying to stay on topic but the kelly i love the kelly's um they are so so beautiful and they were so I think the Kelly was 
like the first time it was made was 1892, but it wasn't made popular until Grace Kelly, and I think Grace Kelly carried it in the, let me look here. Um, oh, in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, uh, To Catch a Thief. So in 1954, is that the date? Yeah, 1954, she carried the bag, and then the bag was kind of dubbed the Kelly. It had a different name originally, but they gifted her the bag, and she started carrying the bag and the bag just became like wildly successful and very popular. And here is a picture of um, Princess Grace Kelly carrying the uh, Kelly bag. And I think what she has here, it looks soft around the edges. So the Kelly has two versions. The Cellier, the Cellier, which is a very structured box shaped. And then looks like she's carrying here the, oh my gosh, what is the name of it? Uh, the, oh, Rotine, Rotine, the Rotine, and I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, my French is terrible. Um, but the Rotine is the softer Kelly. So there's one that's kind of like a pillowy soft, not very structured, kind of puts you in more of a vibe of a, of a Birkin, a softer leather. Um, the bag has shape, but it's not like sturdy and structured like the Cellier. Um, and so that bag is super, super, super gorgeous. Again, the Kelly comes in an array of sizes. There's like a micro Kelly that has an insane wait list to get. And then there's more of like a, the Kelly uh, Voyage is like really, it's a really massive Kelly, which is probably why it's called the Voyage. And then there's the Kelly uh, Pochette, and it's a small kind of like clutch. That's a Kelly. They're all gorgeous. I mean, I can't say it enough. Go to Yogi's Closet and review the history. It's just incredible. So right now the meat and potatoes, right? We're gonna talk about the Birkin. Um, let me grab the Birkin. I don't know why I always do this. I don't get things like in my reach. It's like Jean Louise Dumas is um, the kind of creative director of Hermes or the CEO of Hermes. And he's on a plane and he meets this actress named Jane Birkin. And she's famous for carrying like a basket because she couldn't find a purse that could carry all of her things. So she's super famous for carrying around this basket. Well, she was trying to put the basket in the overhead compartment. Everything falls out. And she's sitting in first class next to uh, Dumas. And um, on the back of like a sick bag, they sketched this idea for a purse. And then in 1984, he creates it and sends her one. And of course, not bearing the lead, he sends her a Hermes Birkin and it is created for her. And it is wildly successful bag. So this, just about the Birkin history, right? So um, the Birkin uh, is one of the Hermes bags that takes 18 hours to produce. One person does it from cradle to grave. One person designs it. The Hermes bags range from probably $10,000 all the way up. The Himalayan Hermes bag is $550,000. It's made from like albino crock and there's the, um, the loops are diamond encrusted here. Uh, and it is just an incredible bag. And the bag, again, has like the saddle stitching that you would see um, in very early Hermes like, harnesses. So getting an Hermes bag, first before we talk about the how to authenticate it. So getting an Hermes bag is very difficult. The boutiques limit, even if you have the money, the boutiques limit how many bags you can buy a year. Um, oh. Sorry, I was like, did my camera just shut off? No, we're on, we're still golden. Also, you guys, this is so ratchet, but I just realized you can see that I put, <laughs> I'm not starting this video over. You can see it, comment on it, I don't care. I just put, uh, the sun was so bright out of that window that I just took one of my, uh, shout out USPS, like priority mailboxes that was folded and just stuck it in the window and did not like crop it out of the frame. But we are here now, we are in the home stretch and I'm not doing this over because my kid has to get up and have a snack. So I'm sorry, just talk about me amongst yourselves. So uh, talking about the price and we were talking about the Himalayan Birkin. There's a, reportedly five of them. Um, there is this like socialite in Japan. I think she has all three sizes. And then there, um, Marjorie Harvey, Steve Harvey's wife, has one. 
And there's this guy out in Vegas who is incredibly obnoxious. I mean, he is just like, if you look up, like, he just is obnoxious. If you look up tool bag, he's probably a very nice guy, but he just looks like a tool bag, like a sleazy. Like, if you look up tool bag, douche bag, like, his picture's there for both of them. So, and he bought the other one from Privé Porter for $550,000. But the bag is just gorgeous and ridiculous. Very so, difficult to get your hands on a Birkin. Um, they, again, limit how many you can buy. Uh, the colors are difficult to get. Like if you get on a wait list, it's very difficult to get a specific color. They'll just call you and say, the bag's here and you have to buy it in person. I was at the Hermes store in um, Highland Park Village in Dallas and I was looking at the her bag, which I did not show. The her bag, let me put up a picture of that. Her bag's really cute. It retails for about $3,000. So, um, and it looks like a Birkin, but more casually worn. I mean, Kim Kardashian like let her kids color on hers. Um, but she got like money money she could have her kids color on a birkin so it's not my business but um so i was there looking at the her bag and she said you know if we get a birkin in like we can't even like send it to you people like fly in purchase their birkins like they'll get a birkin you have to fly in within 24 hours to pick up your birkin and leave i mean it's just insane so thank goodness for the resale market because that's where I got my Birkin from because again, they limit how many you can purchase a year. Um, and then also to get on the wait list, you have to have purchase history. So the Birkin like can't be your first bag unless you get it on the pre-loved market, which I did. I got my bag from Fashion File and couldn't be happier about the quality of my bag. Now these bag, my bag looks really structured because I have an insert in it. But Birkins are generally very, um, the leather's very soft. And so if you see a really um, structured boxy Birkin, it's probably not real. Um, another thing that you see on Birkins is if it's real, the, the pull straps are very heavy. They're not really flimsy. They're heavy pull straps. Now my bag is uh, palladium and there's palladium and gold. And on the gold straps, and I'll put a picture up, if your bag has gold accoutrement, there's gonna be like a little hallmark on the end, and the hallmark is very specific, and so counterfeiters have a really difficult time pulling off that hallmark. But if you have the uh, palladium like here, like I have, and I love the silver um, color, uh, there's not a hallmark on here. There is uh, like a date code on the back of Birkins. Um, and I'm gonna put a picture of the one that I have here um, up in the corner here so you can see why we talk about it if it's really difficult to see in camera. Um, this bag specifically backing up is the Togo leather. Um, it appears to have ve vertical veining, but it's more of like a, a pebbly kind of leather. And it's not your classic pebble because I think that's like a different type of leather, but it's pebbly with veining. This color is you can say etope, etope, um, and it's more of like a like a topier gray, and not to be confused with etain, which etain is almost like a etain looks like a true true gray, like it's not as warm as this bag is in particular. So this is the 35, it's 35 centimeters, and I think I might have said inches earlier, but sorry, I'm an American and switching over to the metric system in my brain sometimes I do that a lot. Like I'll say 85 inches when I mean millimeters just because I default to inches because I'm so American. America. Also, I voted today and I got a pin. I was really excited about it. So if you haven't voted, if you have not yet voted, make sure you go. There's two more days of early voting and Monday there's no voting and Tuesday is election day. Make it happen, people. Get out. Exercise your right to vote. Okay, so um, what are we talking about? Where did I... Where did I stop off with this? Oh, um, with authenticating. So again, on a lot of these designer bags, the metal should never pill or fake, pill or flake, <laughs> um, or it's fake if it pills or flakes. Um, it can tarnish because it is like a precious metal, so it can tarnish and needs to be shined. The stamp on the Hermes bag should always look uniform. Um, the letters should look more like block letters. There should be an accent Q over the E and uh, Hermes doesn't emboss their prints. It's just printed on top. So if you rub your fingers over it and you feel like you can feel the, um, the printing, then get your bag authenticated. It may not be real. Then next with the back stitching, I will put an image up of this, but 
Um, again, remember every Hermes bag is made cradle to grave by one person by hand, which makes them incredibly, uh, which I think which makes them kind of expensive because one person is producing it. Um, and again, they use uh, like a, a saddle stitching. And so on the back, the first couple stitches on the handles are a single stitch and then it goes to a double stitch. And so there should be some level of imperfection because it's hand sewn. So if you see the stitching and it is too perfect, that could be a trigger for you to get your bag authenticated. Um, but you should also see that it goes single stitch to double stitch. And I'll put a picture up of that as well. Um, the handles are rounded. The leather is kind of like melted off and smooth. Um, the inside of an Hermes bag uh, is a calf's leather. They all are lined with calf leather and with calf, no, lied, goat leather. They're all lied with, I mean, is a baby goat a calf? No, that's a cow. Listen, people, I'm not your girl to be like on a farm, you know, so you get what you get. So the inside is lined with a goat leather and it's a very specific filling leather as well. Um, oh God, my kid's up. I'm going to wrap this up, team. And then on the inside of the Hermes bag, um, uh, the zipper starts with an H. And uh, there's one other thing. Oh, um, the date code on some of these bags would be under the flap or um, on the pull strap here. And so the date code helps you know when the bag was designed and produced. And it also has a maker's mark in it, which is like top secret. And it leads back to the actual person like who created your bag. And it's like super top secret. And it's so cool. I wish I could crack the, the code behind it. But I think that's really cool too. Um, the hooks here should not wiggle at all. And they are more like rounded off at the top. And counterfeiters generally don't get to get, they don't get the rounded portion here right it's very square when they do it so that's a way to know if a bag is counterfeit and then one of the dead giveaways the feet on the chanel bag on the chanel you guys i am like very distracted but i'm not doing this video over shout out to all you guys get your airman's bag i mean pay off your student loans buy your house and then get an airman's bag also do whatever you want to do if you want to like live in your car and get your airman's bag do you boo like do it for the haters, the masses, and the paparazzi. So the feet on the Hermes bag should not move. Seriously, what is happening? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't know what's going on with my camera. I got nothing, but I left off on the feet. The feet are hammered in on an authentic bag and they should not move. So if you can turn the feet at all, and mine aren't moving at all, if you can turn the feet at all, you need to get your bag authenticated because it may or may not be real. You guys, so that is the gist of my little walk down Hermes lane. Um, I can say that I've had the most luck finding the best bags with Fashion File. The caveat to that is the real real probably has better pricing but you can't return their bag. So if for any reason you get it and you're unhappy with it, you can't return it. So I would recommend Fashion File for your pre-loved Birkins and Kellys. You guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, sorry, it was kind of scatterbrained, but I think if you've been here before and you know me, you kind of expect it to just always be a little bit wonky and a little bit scatterbrained. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Hug each other, love each other, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good weekend.